New details are emerging about the motive for this week's deadly shooting in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We are also learning more about the four people that were gunned down in the medical building. Nancy Chen is in Tulsa, which also happens to be her hometown. So I, I imagine covering this story, Nancy, takes on even sort of a greater weight for you. Um, good morning. Emery, good morning to you. Absolutely. These stories are never easy to cover regardless of where they happen, but certainly this is very close to home here in Tulsa. Uh, and, you know, we are learning more details about what happened in this hospital complex. Uh, police say the gunman did not choose his target at random. Instead, they say that he blamed one of the doctors in that office for his back pain after a recent surgery. He came in with the intent to kill Dr. Phillips and anyone who got in his way. Tulsa Police Chief Wendell Franklin says a letter found on the gunman who killed four people at a medical building Wednesday and then himself made it clear he targeted his own surgeon, Dr. Preston Phillips. He blamed Dr. Phillips for the ongoing pain following the surgery. The gunman killed Dr. Phillips, a Harvard Medical School graduate who regularly volunteered overseas. Dr. Stephanie Hoosen, a sports and internal medicine specialist, receptionist Amanda Glynn, a mother of two boys, and clinic visitor William Love, an Army veteran who police say held a door shut so others could flee. To the family of Mr. Love, I'm so sorry we couldn't save you. We are grieving with you. Police say the shooter legally purchased both weapons used in the shooting, including an AR-15 style rifle similar to these. He bought a little more than an hour before the massacre. These folks deserve better. Oklahoma deserves better. Oklahoma State Representative Melissa Provenzano's district includes the medical building. She says even though police took immediate action, much more can be done to prevent similar shootings. What are you calling for? We need to take action ahead of something like this happening and put 24 hour waiting period background checks and get rid of the anti red flag law. These things we could do now. And St. Francis is a hub in this community. It employs more than 10,000 people. And understandably, many of those healthcare workers are shaken up that something like this could happen in a place of healing. But even so, they are continuing to show up and care for patients. Nancy, um, you point out that this is your hometown. And as you say, uh, it's never easy to cover these stories. Th th these are absolutely heartbreaking. But when it hits so close to home, and I know that your mom worked in that hospital, I know she's okay, uh, but what was, what was going through your mind? I, I texted you earlier this morning that it feels as if now we're in a situation where almost everyone that I know knows someone who's affected either directly or indirectly by gun violence in this country. Absolutely. It, it just goes to this sense of feeling like, when can you be safe? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was in Buffalo just a couple weeks ago covering the shooting as people were grocery shopping on a Saturday afternoon. These were folks who were working at a doctor's office. There were two doctors among those dead, as well as a patient and someone who's accompanying another, or I'm sorry, a receptionist, as well as someone who's accompanying a patient. These are places that people are not suspecting that something would happen like this. And it, it just goes to show you um, how senseless all of this can be. You know, one of the things we've been talking about, um, you know, since actually the supermarket shooting is these high capacity rifles yeah. and how much damage you can do in such a short period of time. And the other thing is about how easy it is to buy a gun. Yep. And, and we're learning more about the timeline. And it is, I mean, even in the midst you of texted all, me this last night, yes, that you even were in the midst of all of these shootings, it is shocking how quickly this all unfolded from the gun purchase to, you know, four people and then the gunman dead inside this medical facility. Can you talk to us about the timeline? Absolutely. If we're going back to uh, even when that gun was purchased, an AR-15 style rifle purchased the day of the shooting, just about an hour before all of this started. He also, uh, police say, used a semi-automatic handgun that was purchased on Sunday and both were used during the shooting. But once the shooting did start, uh, police say that the, the response was swift, that it was a very tremendous quick response by law enforcement from the moment those first 911 calls came to when they arrived. They say it all happened within five minutes. Uh, the first 911 call came, they say, actually 
from a patient who was doing a virtual visit when a, with a doctor um, when they realized that something was was very much awry uh, to obviously several more 911 calls that quickly followed that but they say they were here on scene and, and on the floor where this was happening the second floor and that the gunman they say died by suicide as they were approaching all of this uh, just 39 seconds after they went inside the building. Wow. Uh, Nancy, thank you very much. Thank you.